The second attacking principle is to support the player on the ball through the use of triangles and diamonds. Once possession has been established and you have recognized who has the ball, the next step would be to identify which opponent is pressuring the ball, followed by identifying which teammates are close enough to support the player on the ball, while also identifying the space that they can exploit. You will naturally create triangles and diamonds around the player on the ball if you think about these steps ahead of time. It's important because it would affect the speed of play, the decisions that the player on the ball could make and the options they could have. If the timing of support is off, then the space will close and the forward pass to you will not be available. This also affects the decisions of the player on the ball. With no forward options or support, players will tend to dribble more and waste time in order to think about or find other options. Generally speaking, a reset from a drop option could help restart this process. To find success, you will need to create a numbers advantage around the player pressing the ball, while also exploiting the space between the lines of defense. The angle at which you approach the player on the ball is also important because it will affect if you can pass around the opponent or not. For example, if the angle of support is on the same line as the opponent, then the passing lane to you will be blocked. Simply adjust your angle around the opponent so that the passing lane is easier to make. Let's not forget about the first attacking principle. While triangles and diamonds are being created around the player on the ball, the players on the opposite vertical half must maintain width and depth. Coming towards the ball will crowd the area and could eliminate the time and space you would have. Quiz time. Can you spot the players using the attacking principles? Which ones are doing well or need some help? Comment below and I'll see you in the next video.